Modern Animism Radio. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Laura Giles, and I'm here today with Sherry Calvert and Johnny Whittingham. Today we're going to be talking about something that I think is really important, although um, an un unofficial component of animism, and that's hospitality. If that confuses you, stay with us and we'll explain. So let's give gratitude to the elements and ancestors so we can get started. I acknowledge and thank the element of earth for our home, food, foundation, beauty, sensuality, and stability that surround us all. I acknowledge and thank the element of air for clear communication that can help us increase understanding between peoples, which is so important right now. I acknowledge the element of fire and as it you remind us to balance our power with responsibility so that we always use it wisely. I acknowledge the element of water and thank you for sustaining our lives and reminding us to flow. I acknowledge and thank our loving, helping ancestors from all the realms and send um, our listeners our gratitude for tuning in. If your show or this show or any show inspires you, please consider donating to the program. And you can do that on our website at www.pansociety.net or at buymeacoffee.com backslash pansociety. And if money's an issue, you can also help by liking, commenting, and sharing our posts on social media. And if you want to join the conversation, head on over to our private Facebook group and you can meet all of us over there. So thanks, Johnny and Sherry, for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Sure. It's nice to talk with you guys. So just so we start off on the same page, can each of you tell us what uh, hospitality means to you? Go on, Sherry. I've already, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I've, I've done a little bit. <laughs> I was going to let you go first because you're um, new to the podcast and uh, everybody gets to Yeah. <laughs> Okay, do you want me to go first? Please. <laughs> Hospitality. Oh, <laughs> it's a minefield. Um, it's an interesting one, though, an interesting minefield. Um, I think for me, it's about moving beyond the codified norms or behaviors of what hospitality means. And from an animist perspective, it's about the relationship underneath that, I guess. I mean, it's something, it's something that kind of all cultures from what I can gather, well, most cultures share a similar theme when it comes to looking after guests and, and, and strangers. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, I don't know, it, does that, for me then, does that, does that come up from kind of like survival mechanisms, you know, is it, is it kind of like an evolutionary psychology thing, you know? to get the best result this is how you behave in this situation and if you behave in this situation you'll get a bad result therefore it will be a bad outcome so I, i'm kind of like i was looking at it from kind of that perspective but yeah the the relationship behind it is is also important for me. i think that's interesting because with um and I, i'm sure other cultures do this too but in korea when you go to people's homes you don't go empty-handed um, you always bring a gift and like a great gift is, uh, and it's kind of funny is like, you see a lot of Koreans bring dish soap or laundry detergent and you wonder why. And it's because it's kind of like, theoretically it's, it expands. So it fills up the space. So it's kind of like wishing abundance, but you also don't give gifts like knives. Like if you give a knife to someone, you're severing the tie you have with that person or your relationship. So, you know, and you know, to someone, it could be a beautiful knife set, but to someone else receiving it, it is absolutely a disaster. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that's, that's a big faux pas then. So there's, there's, there's a hell of a lot of consideration that's going into that. Yeah, so for me, hospitality is really the expression of oneness because it's, it's like saying that I am you, you are me, and I'm going to take care of you because if I were in your position, I would want to be taken care of too. And I see the ways that our lives interconnect. And so no matter what um, problems we have or no matter what animosities we have, this is like a safe space where we engage in our humanity. Mm -hmm. So it's really not a codified thing. It's like I'm moving into my heart space. This is my home. This is my sanctuary. I'm taking care of you here as humans and then outside of this place we can bicker and fight all we want <laughs> uh, do you find because um, i'm the same way like if someone comes to my home you know you don't have to ask for anything food is on me yeah. 
showers on me, like everything. Like, don't think about it. If you need new towels, please ask me. If you need laundry, ask me. And, it, you know, I will make sure it's done. Um, but do you ever find, like, if you go to someone else's and you don't get that, it's not... Like, do you ever feel jaded or, um, and not I totally do. jaded? Do. <laughs> Especially I if they've do. already been in your home and know your, your routine and how you do things. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the UK, I think we measure it by this, you know, if, you, if you're, <laughs> if you're offered a cup of tea, that's, that's a good thing. You know, if somebody doesn't offer you a cup of tea as the host, it's kind of, we kind of see that as a bit rude. <laughs> so we all we always we always make the first thing we do when people come through the door is we we stick the kettle on and make a brew and that you know sit down and we you know, chat around a cup of tea mm -hmm. just sim just simple things like that you know and if somebody doesn't well <laughs> the whole British kind of uh, I don't know yeah I notice it when people... behavior comes in yeah go on sorry I notice it when people d do or don't offer hospitality but i don't hold them to my standard because i don't you know if you weren't brought up that way then you weren't brought up that way but at the same time if we have a relationship and i am that way towards you and then you don't reciprocate and don't reciprocate and don't reciprocate then i wonder how much of a relationship do we really have yeah yeah that's true well in korea when we're eating so you kind of can see in some places and i'm sure other people have this too um so when you're sitting down to a meal in korea it's it's kind of family style you have like your bowl of rice and then the main dishes are on the table so everybody shares the main dishes and there's also side dishes which is called banchan and you typically if you're going to be a gracious host have at least five banchan the more you like the person sitting with you, the more banchan selections you have on the table. The least amount that you like the person, you have less banchan on the table. So it kind of reflects how much you respect or like the person that you're eating with. So yeah, so so there's there's this kind of like I was I was looking at the kind of ancient Greeks and there was a there was a specific kind of quota of things they had to do regardless of whether they like the person or they didn't and i was thinking you know if you like the, if you like somebody there's going to be more of everything i guess uh, i guess that's that's kind of reflected in what you've just been saying mm -hmm. for us if there's like a holiday or you know just a family gathering or something if you don't have enough food to to feed like three times as many people as show up then you are cheap and <laughs> or you're not loving or you're not generous or you're not hospitable or, you know, and when I would go to other cultures things, they would have like these, and, and I'm not judging, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, like these little tiny, really pretty plates with like four bonbons on it. And, you know, one for each of us. And I was just like, I don't understand this. I mean, you know, there's, there's waste and there's economy. I don't know. It's just a different, different thing. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> right. Like, are you allowed to ask for more? Is right, right. <laughs> well, what I love is I love cultures where if you're offered something and the so many times you're supposed to refuse it before you say yes, like, or yeah. if you say yes too fast, like maybe it wasn't enough or. Like, yeah. Cause for us, if somebody says like, if I say, Oh, I really like your shirt then you're kind of obligated to give you that shirt and yeah. and so you're very careful about what you admire and you have to refuse and it's that same kind of thing you have to refuse at least three times to know that it's real because you don't want to um make somebody lose face you you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have the whole kind of like please take it no no i couldn't no i insist no i couldn't no i really insist okay yeah, yeah. It, it's that kind of thing isn't it that, that yeah. that's that's the uk version of that yeah <laughs> yeah i think so, it really yeah, makes it, a difference that i mean even if it might be like a role that we're playing the the going through the motions of being generous and thinking about the other person it it's, for me is really important um practice i don't know but like the the so i travel a ton and I take people all over the place. And the places that I have enjoyed the most, it's not because of the scenery. 
um, or the food, although, you know, that certainly adds to the experience. But I think about, there's only one place in the world that I was just like so ready to go home. And sorry if this is upsetting anybody, it's just my truth, but it was Turkey. And Turkey is amazing. It's beautiful. They've got amazing sights, but there was just no hospitality there. It was very, you know, if you pay for a service, they're going to give you the service and they don't care whether you like it or not. They don't care. It's like, you know, it's 501. I'm off the clock. Bye. And there was no, you know, let me show you the best rug shop or whatever you're interested in. Can, you know, oh, you like music? Let me show you the great a uh, music shop. It wasn't any of that. It was just, they just did not care. They did not care at all. I mean, it, it was, I felt the whole time like I was invisible and I've never felt like that anywhere else. So I had a different experience in Turkey. I mean, the, really? the, the, the guys, the guys there who did the tour of, um, Ephesus, um, they were really good. You know, they really were going out of their way and they were kind of, you know, I was going up to them kind of when they were having a, a fag cigarette and kind of asking them questions and they were standing there and chatting away about stuff. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I will chat up locals because I want to know the people as well as the place. I want to get a flavor, you know, and I want, and sometimes that opens doors to opportunities you didn't know existed. So I had a really hard time chatting up anybody. They just did not care. <laughs> Do you think it was a gender issue or a what? A gender issue? I didn't get Turkey's very secular. Okay. I, no. Interesting. No. I've never been to Turkey, so I don't have an experience there. But I do know that um, I do with cultures that have animism or even if they recognize it or not, like very tight knit families and um, uh, they're they're really firm on their beliefs. Um, I, I noticed that they have better it's more pleasant to be there. Like I know when we yeah. moved to Mexico, Mexico is a, especially the area that we went, it was very, um, it is a different, it's a culture shock. Like the way it looks, the way it's built, the way the houses are, how you shop, like everything. It is nothing like the U S and, um, but I did like from the moment I got off the plane and the people were there to meet, like my husband was already working there. So he has already been there for a couple weeks. And I, when I arrived, the people that were there to pick me up, immediately took me to their home fed me because my hotel wasn't ready and then like for weeks after that our social lives were booked because everybody wanted to invite us to their homes wanted us to eat with their family wanted us to come see their cities because they all lived in different areas and it was exhausting but it was just amazing i'm like you guys don't know us we could be awful people <laughs> and, and we're in your home we're hanging out with your children and your feet and so we immediately saw what life was like there um, versus being stuck in a hotel and being afraid to ask where to go and what to do. Everybody was like, nope, they grabbed us by the hand and drug us through the streets. Like it was just that easy for them. <laughs> do you think it's inherent then in, in humans, hospitality? Or do you think it's something that we've learned? I, I think it is. I think that we learn in the West to be afraid I think we learn to withhold because uh, obviously I grew up here, not obviously, but I grew up here. Um, but I, you know, my parents are not that. And I don't know. So I look around, Johnny, you and I were talking about this actually before we went live and people don't talk to each other. They don't look at each other. They don't engage with each other. They just walk past you like you're not even there. And, and I think if you, have a tribe then you're always thinking about who's next to you because it impacts you you know you don't want somebody to be broke down on the road you don't want somebody to be hungry you're kind of you know you might not be all in their face all the time but if something goes down you're going to be right there and i think in america we don't do that unless there's a tragedy like the things that are going on now like corona or you know i can't breathe that kind of stuff i mean then the same in the uk yeah and to an extent, um, hmm. so I live in Alabama, as a lot of people know. So this is Southeast, deep South <laughs> in, in the U.S. And it's different here. So um, 
because the way I grew up, family was tight. Like, you know, you stuck by each other and you took care of each other. And even like the wayward friends that eventually they became family too. But it, like here, when we moved here, I noticed, um, it, I get thrown off a little bit because people will talk your ear off here. Like they'll engage in conversation for, you know, gas station, line at the grocery store, whatever. But it's, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but there's this vapidness to it for me because it's not genuine. Like they really don't care how your day is going. Or I mean, it's a very topical conversation, but they'll, you know, they'll chit chat and they really, it, it seems like a lot of people just don't honestly care because they'll never contact you again. You might not ever see that person again, but it's just almost to be gossipy, I guess. And then, then that's it. Like, it's not, it's not, there's no real connection. And then the, you know, I, I haven't like a lot of the people like hairdressers or whatever, I don't ever see these people again. So it's like, so I'm always closed off and I don't want to share because one my, it's my time. And then also I don't feel like you care. So I don't want to tell you all of that stuff. Like I don't want to talk to you about it. So it's, I don't know, like it, it, the cultural difference here is, I mean, it does bother me and it does make me a little weary when talking to strangers and meeting people. It makes it harder to form bonds with people. Yeah, we, we always, with the kind of vapid thing, it's, if, you, if we're going down that line in the UK, it's always, we start talking about the weather, you know? <laughs> That, that, that is the go-to thing. If you're feeling a bit awkward or you don't know what to say or you're not particularly interested, the weather will come up time and time again. <laughs> We're, within a few minutes, you know, and, and that's it. And then you, you go your separate ways. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But do you, think that, do you think that's something to do with, with the culture that we live in? You know, because UK culture shares a lot of similarities yeah. with you guys, you know, over in the States. Yeah. Do you think that's... Capitalism, for want of a better word. I think there's a yearning for connection, and I think some people get it by chit-chatting. Um, if you see these big things like Burning Man, I think that's a yearning for connection, and you, and you have this really spectacular experience together, and it feels so connecting, and then you leave, and it's gone. And I think if you don't have, for one thing, the foundation of hospitality, and, and you don't have a tribe, then it is going to be gone when the experience is gone. But, so I think hospitality is just a, a single piece of that tribe making and that, that single piece of connection. If you don't have that, then it's really hard to stay connected to somebody once the event is over, once the conversation is over, you know? That's why the gift giving is, is so prevalent then, isn't it? In, in a lot of the hospitality kind of um, different forms of hospitality in different cultures, the, the giving of the gifts is is something that is really significant, you know. It's well, that, that kind of thing. I think it's a component of generosity, abundance, and I think it's also, it's a love language. A little, sorry? It's a love language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's also something about, um, it, it's it's reciprocal as well. You kind of, you know, you you take that gift with you and kind of if that person who's giving you the gift knocks on knocks on your door in two years time it's kind of like ah you know <laughs> i remember them giving me this gift i've got you know i'm i'm compelled on you know my honor compels me then to return the favors you know there's there's that kind of reciprocal idea within gift giving isn't it it's gift giving is great but it's also a kind of debt as well there's there's kind of all that kind of stuff going on so well i think so with the with the yin and the yang, I think anything can be uh, made toxic. And I think it depends on if it comes from the heart, because if you look at Native American cultures in the ideal form, <laughs> you know, uh, if not for real, gifting is one of the uh, signs of how great a person is. So the more generous you are, the bigger you are. So it's not about how much you have, it's how much you give away. Mm. and same in um, north culture as well yeah mm. yeah so if you if you do that out of obligation or if you do that out of bitterness or or you know for different reasons then it's not the same thing as giving with an open heart so i think once it becomes a, that that's a sovereignty piece so once it becomes an obligation it's not sovereign anymore mm -hmm. mm. well then you know my my argument then is is anything sovereign really 
Yeah, how, how, how do we distinguish sovereignty from unity? You know, there's, there's, but yeah, that's, that's another, that's another time, isn't it? Perhaps another thing to talk about, but you know, it's. Well, it, I think it's hard to talk about yeah. it without talking about the other because they dance always. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a line and where's the line between what I want to do because I want to do it and where, what I want to do so that I can still be a part of you. And I think because our Western society is set up the way that it is, we can go a long time without having to give up anything. We can be so independent without ever talking to, I mean, look at Corona, you know, we're social distancing now and to the extreme, I don't have to go to the grocery store. They can be delivered to me. I, I, don't, I don't, if I want to buy a car, I can do it online. You know, I can do all kinds of things without ever talking to anybody. And I think that makes it worse because it makes it harder to connect. I mean, I'm doing, um, I'm working virtually and I'm seeing people. It's not the same connection. Mm -mm. No. I think also like with the, the gift giving on, because mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, definitely. Like, the idea of feeling obligated to do that, you know, it, then that breaks sovereignty. But I think also the one upping each other too, like, point like oh, I gave you this oh well I'm even better I'm giving you this yeah. whether you're doing it to each other or like at a birthday party when you're trying you know like I never understood that <laughs> but it does change the situation yeah I mean what the other, the other thing that I was thinking about was is it is it to imply the kind of hospitality implies the kind of um to be a guest or I don't know if we're talking about the concept of the guest within within hospitality, it, it, it denotes that somebody owns the territory that the guest is on. So there's 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 kind of like lots of territorial issues coming in as well, isn't it? Well, I think of it more as resources. So if you're in my house, then I'm in control of the resources. So it's it is up to me to share those resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may bring some with you, but I definitely have the lion's share. <laughs> So I'm sharing with you, but I think, yeah, the guest, that's definitely as important as the host because I have seen some really bad guests. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, when, we were, uh, when we were in Lower Antelope Canyon waiting to get in and the way, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy how it's set up. Like everybody's just shuffled in waiting and then they'll start leading groups in and we were lucky we were in there first and um i had an amazing experience but there was a tour group from a different country there and i think their expectations of how they were supposed to be treated were higher than what was available in the area and plus a lot of the tour guides are kids or teenagers and so they're just now learning and they're opening their land up to you first of all so this this is you know indigenous lands indigenous culture and um so you're on their time, you're on their, their, you know, in their space. And the tour company was just ugly. Like it was the leader of it was, he was like, look, you come here, you introduce yourselves to us, you do this, you do that. Like he was telling them how to treat the company. And it was appalling, like just the, the idea and the expectation to have. Yeah. And so during our protest last weekend, there was a group who came to me and was coming basically telling me how i was supposed to run it and, and i was i was shocked i'm like you know you're a guest here you don't get to do that <laughs> i mean if, if that's what you want make your own protest <laughs> <laughs> crazy yeah there's 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 boundaries to to hospitality isn't there? and and you know being a guest and a host there's definite boundaries there yeah, it's like we're in this together, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't take advantage of hospitality. Mm -mm. It's precious, and if it's if it's go so you know we have a a group here, a live group, and we meet up and we do things, and most of the time it's free. Anybody can come, do whatever you want. I don't need to see you again. You don't need to thank me. You don't. You know, you just do you. And um, we provide a lot of stuff free of charge most of the time, or sometimes we ask for donations. And most of the time, nobody brings anything, nobody donates. And to me, that's a huge violation of hospitality too, because that's like saying your time is not worth anything to me, or you're not worth anything to me. I don't appreciate you. And if, 
you know, everything, you got to have skin in the game. The earth gives up so much just for us to be here. And if we don't nurture and protect that relationship, you know, the energy can only cycle if we're participating in that cycling. I mean, and that shows up in so many ways, the way that we use the water, the way that we use people, the way that we use our furniture, everything, you got to take care of stuff. You got to have a relationship with it. You got to nurture it. And, you know, I don't say anything, but I'm just like, okay, guys, <laughs> you know, that's on you. If, if you walk away with that, if, I'm, I'm, if I have it and I can share it, I'm going to share it. And I, I just don't know how much you're going to get out of it if you're not invested. Mm -hmm. You're way better than I am because... <laughs> I used to host um, a certain meeting and I, it got to the point that I was provided, like it started off, everybody would bring a dish and we would have a potluck before we started. Um, and I didn't care about the alcohol because it was at my house. I just said, you know, you're responsible. You get home your way safely, whatever. And then slowly it became, nobody was bringing food. I was providing all the food. I was like, all right, whatever. And then the alcohol thing became an issue because they were getting drunk and not leaving my house. So, and we're doing this on weekdays sometimes. And they're not leaving my house till one or two in the morning. And I'm like, this, I've had enough. I was, I was like, you guys are not being responsible. You're being disrespectful to me in my space. Like, I want to go to bed. <laughs> like, you're still here drinking coffee, trying to sober up. When I clearly said we were starting at this time and we're ending at this time. <laughs> like, and so it goes both ways, I think. Like, if it's, it's one thing to have that, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's about, it, it's, it's about, it, it's an encounter like everything for me within animism is it's an encounter and whether there's there's a, a, a deeper relationship to that with with encounters you've got to listen haven't you because if you're not listening uh, and that that involves kind of listening beyond the word so you know kind of I'm, I'm sure that you were kind of getting a little bit annoyed at say kind of i don't know half half past 10 in the evening thinking come on guys you know i've got to go to work tomorrow or i need to be up and that that wasn't that wasn't seen or heard by your guests at all was it it wasn't it wasn't acknowledged in any, in any way so yeah there's something about kind of listening and giving giving people that safe space as well um but then then hoping that that's reciprocated i don't know it's but yeah i've been in that situation a few times and it is really annoying and I think when I was younger, I've probably done it myself once, twice as well. <laughs> kind of like, you know, it's three o'clock, you, ne you need to go now, John. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that goes to sovereignty though, right? Like if you were totally unaware of how you're affecting someone else because you're in their space, I, it shows your disconnect. Like you're not acting whole at that moment. So you, you kind of have to check yourself. Like, did you drink too much and you lost your ability to um be aware of what's going on or did you knowingly choose to do that did you choose to drink that much so that you didn't have to go home or you thought this was social time instead of you know so it's there's a lot going on there there's a lot going on in every moment it's not just yeah. about hospitality that that you know that web thing you can't really look at anything in isolation because you got that web happening all the time you know and and maybe there is sometimes when i my need is just so great that i infringe upon you like but I think the, the thing to do then is just be honest and be, hey, this is what I need from you. You know, if you can, if you're in a space that to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know. Well, right. I, think, I, I think then that's why you look at kind of like a lot of traditional cultures and they do have that codified way of behaving. Yeah. And, I think, and I think that's to try and get around some of the things that we were just talking about, kind of, you know, not noticing that, they get, that the host is tired or, yeah. you know, or, it, it, I think that codified behavior, I know I keep saying codified, but that way of behaving is, is, is important, isn't it? And, it? and and it does need to be, there are certain rules that you have when you go to somebody's house, you don't go in there, you don't tear the curtains down, you don't, you don't pee all over the sofa, you know, you, th those things are going to get you thrown out immediately. But then there's other, other smaller things as well, you know, if you're taking up all the space by talking too much or you know it's i don't i don't know there's there's, there's a there's a lot of things going on there yeah so well, yeah I'm, I'm all i'm all for codified behavior in, so, in hospitality <laughs> on the codified behavior um does that ever leave room for if someone is actually in crisis so like 
my my situation was a habit like them staying over drunk and not leaving that that was not one person in a crisis moment um so there was nothing really you know there but in a co in a different situation like if it was one person and it was one time does codified behavior of hospitality have room or space to acknowledge that someone is there not whole and not well and, and may need actual help i think i think once you've got past the codified boundaries you've created a safe space for the guest you you've kind of you've helped them physically you've kind of you know helped them out you've done the laundry or you've given them a you know set of clothes to wear or whatever it is i think once you've gone through those physical motions i think they've got to happen first the actual physical reciprocation of, of that has got to happen and you've created by doing that you've created a, a a place hopefully where the guest feels comfortable and then they're able to then a little later on it, it, i don't know talk about stuff and be more open and and i guess that's when the relationship personal relationship starts beyond the codified behavior once that's that's out out of the way that's when the personal relationship starts and that's when you start to hear that person and, and talk and that's that's my perspective on it. that's that's what i think anyway I don't know. What, what do you reckon? I think that's when the pineapple comes out. Sorry? <laughs> that's when the pineapple comes out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Sherry? Uh, a little bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, Go on. I'm just joking, but <laughs> in the South, um, when you've overstayed your welcome, the host would send out a pineapple. Which is a very nice gift because they're rare, you know. It's like, wow, look at this pineapple, and then it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. Another codified thing. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think yeah, but, a balance sorry. between rules and 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 connection because I think at some point you have to step out of those. I think rules are kind of like a safety net. Like, I don't know what to do here, so I'm gonna follow the rules. Um, but then there's things that can't happen if you're always in the rules. So like when we're traveling, as much as possible, without going like crazy, I mean, I do try to be a good, good guest, but I like to go outside of the traveler rules because that's where the juicy stuff happens. But at the same time, I'm not trying to be a savage and, you know, just be like, well, let's go, wow, you know, because that, that's not good either. Mm -mm. So I, I like to kind of dance in between. Yeah, when I when I was in India a while back, um, there was a there was a huge kind of celebration for the uh, the Raj, the last Raj, and uh, we, me and my friend who were travelling together, we we were sat in with the with the Indians, and uh, we saw there was a stage set up for a lot of pale people, as you as you call us. Um, and it's kind of a lot of the Indian people were coming up to us and saying, you can't sit here. You're not allowed to sit here. You've got to go and sit up there. And we were like, well, you know, we want to experience India. We want to sit with you guys and, and see it from, you know, from this real perspective. And like, no, 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 no. You've got to go and sit up there. We didn't. But you could feel the, there was animosity because we hadn't done that, you know. Um, and like all the guests, we were surrounded by literally thousands of of everyday indians many of whom were exceptionally poor and yet the european guests who were sat up on the stage they were getting these gifts off the raj and it's kind of like loads of they were getting loads of food and they were getting all sorts of stuff you know and it's kind of i would have felt dirty taking that seeing what i saw in india and seeing how a lot of people have to live and you know that that kind of thing and yeah i don't know that, that that was weird for me so yeah it was a real faux pas in india for me to do that but then i had to try and balance that with my own personal um i don't know ethics i guess yeah then that's why a lot of the things that i'm talking about you know breaking the rules is, is exactly that so um in egypt there's all kinds of rules for women there's all kinds of rules for westerners and you can't really know the people or the culture if you follow those rules and that's what i'm there for i'm not there for a sterile tourist experience 
you know, I really want to experience the culture. So I did that stuff too. And same thing, you can't do this. You can't be here. I'm like, now nah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm going to be here. <laughs> you know, I want to be here. And then, you know, they kind of get over it and they're just like, okay. And so I'm grateful for that. I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. In some places it'll get you in serious trouble, won't it? You know, just, just, just doing that, you know, um, do you do you, it's, you've got to balance the kind of like you know the kind of your own personal ethics with the kind of social norms mm -hmm. and with a lot of i don't know common sense yeah for for once sure. a better phrase you know you've, you've got to try and balance it, it it's a big balance you know yeah, yeah. the sun is a beautiful thing <laughs> yeah so i mean the whole thing how how do you think it came about then the kind of idea of, of hospitality where, where where do you think it, it came from I think it came from survival. From survival. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. If you think about, people didn't really travel back then because you can only carry what you could walk with. You know, most people didn't have horses. Everybody's really poor, and so if you didn't, if you didn't get hospitality along the way, you couldn't go anywhere. And if people didn't help each other, you couldn't survive. I mean, so. It's, it's a bit of an overstatement to say I homestead, but <laughs> Sherry and I both homestead. And if you ever try to grow all your own food, make a, you know, store up all your own water, you, you're not going to do it. You need help. Yeah. Somebody needs to do this and somebody needs to do that. And we need to work together and all these kids and all the, you know, the division of labor, you need each other. We don't need each other now. We just got money. We just buy whatever we want. Forget about that guy. You know, somebody else can fix my car and somebody else can do this. And, somebody, and, and so I think we, it's like, if I'm hospitable, then I have to connect with somebody. Oh my God, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know? Right. People are scary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I love, actually, I, I like that you brought that up because with everything that went on with us going in quarantine and COVID, um, because we weren't allowed to have contact with each other or whatever, or, and people were out of jobs, um, you know, and they're not getting the government assistance or whatever. Uh, locally, we've created a, and I'm pretty sure other people have done this too, um, a bartering group. And it has been amazing. Like I've been tapping into it and using it as well. It's helped me get, get rid of stuff out of my house and it's helped me get really cool stuff, things that I wouldn't normally go look for or whatever. But then also food has become a big thing on it. Everybody has done gardens. But once again, you can't grow everything. You can't raise chickens. You can't, you know, everybody has to help each other. So we've been trading that kind of stuff. And it's weird because no money has exchanged hands. And so it's, it's whatever you feel it's valued and what, are, you know, if whatever you're trading for, you feel it's an equal trade, you go for it. And it's been amazing. Like I, I love all of that and, and the connections that we've been making because I would never have met these people in my life had it not been for this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, go ahead, Johnny. So yeah, so a caring society that functions is is uh, you know doesn't have to have money at all, does it? It's 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 it's, it's illusionary on one hand, isn't it? And yet on the other hand, it's so I don't know essential the whole the the whole concept of money, you know. But yeah, you you just proved right there that there's there's absolutely very little need for actual money because. Certainly, in times of crisis, people generally come together. That's what we've seen in the UK. Yeah. Um, we've seen a hell of a lot of community stuff going on now. Um, now the COVID thing is kind of, um, you know, the government's decided that it's not as um, important as it was. Let's say it, the kind of community thing is is tailing off a lot now. Mm. You know, so the, the crisis is is really brought a hell of a lot home to us guys i'm sure it has for you as well yeah you know what we can do with and what we can do without what we need more of what we could do with less you know it's and i think entitlement does not have a place in that mm -mm. No. you you can't barter with entitlement <laughs> <laughs> and i think that yeah it doesn't go very far of uh hospitality as well mm. everybody's well, got to have skin in the game you know, it's your tribe too. There's a sense of entitlement, though, within within being a guest, though, isn't it? A guest. I don't think if there's gratitude. I don't ever go into anybody's home expecting them to do anything. Right. I always receive it as a gift. Mm. 
even among people that I know do that. Like I have this friend, he's like so generous and he goes way above and beyond. And every single time I am deeply, deeply touched because he does not have to do that. Even though I know that's who he is and I know that's what he'll do, he, I never expect that. And if there were a time or three that he didn't do that, I'm totally cool. I have zero expectation. Mm. Well, I mean, like looking at the, I mean, I know we've talked about Crete. Yes. Um, the kind of the idea of a complete stranger coming to your house, you know, and turning up on your doorstep and, and, and Crete, you know, that's kind of like, well, I've got to show this guy the same hospitality that I would a friend. Yeah. You know? That to me is quite, I mean, I, I grew up in a vicarage where my mom and dad often helped out, you know, um, homeless people. So they'd turn up, up at the vicarage and then we'd kind of feed them and give them somewhere to stay for the night. So I've kind of grown up with that. But I don't know, for a lot of people in the Western society, it's kind of, if you've got a stranger knocking on your door, you know, they've got nothing and they want to come in, they want some shelter, they want feeding. What's going to happen most time? I, I let them in. Yeah. For Thanksgiving, we have almost always had at least one person there who is a complete stranger. Maybe it's a soldier. It's somebody, you know, I, in this group that we have, there was this um, guy from Asia. I think he was from Shanghai. I don't really remember, but he was brand new to the community and it's Thanksgiving. I think he'd been here like a week. <laughs> Didn't know anybody. I'm like, well, you know, why don't you come over? And he came over. And it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, he's in a foreign country. He's never done Thanksgiving before. He's with all these people. And it was like he was a friend. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely will do that. Well, what if a stranger showed up at your door? That's <laughs> like, a little different. That's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. Because where I live, if you're showing up at my door, <laughs> yeah. I don't live in a city. So True. you weren't crazy. You just didn't get off a bus somewhere. You didn't. So I have to think about that. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you find my house, you're trespassing. <laughs> and you've been yeah. off for a minute. <laughs> <So> <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> so, the, yeah, that, there's another boundary, though, isn't there? You know, if, if like with that, that Cretan uh, concept of uh, Xenia, which, which I guess has got the same root, root as kind of uh, Xeno, which means stranger or foreigner. So it's kind of showing showing a stranger or a foreigner hospitality. You know, it's um, that's a different ball game, isn't it? Completely to kind of showing hospitality to somebody you kind of you kind of know or you can kind of relate to, or they're new to the area, but some some person just turn up at the door and and, and asking for for hospitality. Mm -hmm. That, but you know, you look you look back at kind of like some of the the old Norse stories and some of the certainly the greek stories and some of the the, the stuff in in the indian books um that 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 happens all the time because they had this kind of idea and all those three cultures share it and i think i, I don't know there's not a lot of evidence to say that the celts did or but they 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 had to show hospitality because what if it was a god that turned up you know and you were you were basically telling the I don't know, telling Zeus to sod off or, you know, you were telling Thor to get out or, you know, you were, you were being rude or whatever. So they, they built the concept on that, on that and, and as possibility of it being a divine encounter. So you always had to do your best, even to a complete stranger. So, you know, well, and I are, think we ever, are we ever going to get back to that? You know, and we're, we're, as, a, as a society. <laughs> I think we need the to? reason why um, the, the Scottish pain of the betrayal with the Campbells is still so deep, and you can feel this in the land, is because they violated hospitality. They violated hospitality. They were sheltering them and protecting them for weeks, months, and then they just slaughtered them. That's like, you know, I don't know if you're Game of Thrones fans, but that's like the Red Wedding. You know, it's just a yeah, whole thing that cannot be forgiven. <laughs> right. That's how I feel it. That's politics. Uh, I think that's human. That's just, that's a, that's, I, I don't know. That's like a sacred code that's just, oh. 
I don't, I don't, for me that I don't, I don't remember ever being taught that, but I, I think that goes bone deep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the group of people in Afghanistan, isn't there? The, was it the Mark Wahlberg film where he's the lone survivor where he, he yeah, he, yes, he gets um, bumped and then they have to make the, he, he gets taken in by the guy in the village and the, the Taliban come to the village and the guy's like, no way am I handing this guy over. He's under my protection. He's my guest. And yeah, it's, and, and to do that, that, you know, the amount of bravery and conviction right. and courage that, that that Pashtun guy must have had in, in the face of, you know, standing up against the Taliban is like, you know, would yeah. I have been able to do the same thing? I don't know. You know? Yeah. yeah. But there again, I'm not coming from a culture where, the, that tradition is is so valuable. I'm coming from a completely different commercialized culture where it's all about, well, most of the time it's about the individual and about individual survival and what the individual can get out of it. You know, there's, there's something about sacrifice in, in sort of older cultural traditions, isn't there? A lot, a lot more than now. Anyway. For sure. Or how much honor is worth to you, like personal honor. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to, that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, on a, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem to have any place in um, neoliberalism. It doesn't really, neoliberalism kind of uses honour or it kind of uses anything as a tool in order to achieve um, a positive outcome for very few people, you know, so the, the, the concept People, you know, neoliberals will use racism to achieve their ends. They'll use anti-racism to achieve. They're, they're just going to use whatever they can use in order to look after the minority of people. That, you know, that, that's my personal point of view. Yeah. But yeah, the, the concept of honor, you know, how do we get that back? How, how, you know, it, do we need to get it back? Well, it's been a stimulating conversation. Thank you, Johnny and Sherry, for being here. It's nice to talk with you guys. Um, if our listeners have thoughts and you guys want to share comments, I uh, invite you to join our Facebook group and chime in. I hope this was helpful. And if you'd like to donate, of course, you can do that at our website, pansociety.net. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and the podcast channel so that you'll be notified when the next podcast posts. Um, I'm Laura Jones. See y'all next week. Thanks, guys. Ciao. Thanks. Bye. Bye.